Hey, what's up, Liron here. I just wanna give you a bit of a context on today's video. You're gonna learn how I painted this painting outside. Now, it's a bit more of an authentic footage. I, I filmed everything vertically on my phone because I wanted to capture the page a little better. So, sorry about any black bars on the sides of the video, uh, but I hope you'll enjoy the authenticity and the noises of the street and everything. I may chop it up a bit and cut out some irrelevant parts and narrate and explain what I'm doing, okay? So, with that being said, let's jump into the video. Hey, what's up, Liron here. So, I just finished this painting on location, and in this video, I wanna show you how I do it. First, let me show you the reference I'm gonna paint and explain a bit about what I'm trying to express with it. So, here's what I wanna capture. You see this uh, beautiful, tall building and that kind of uh, vertical and horizontal, so I like the combination of the two. And this is what I'm trying to uh, achieve with the painting. Um, it creates a nice little reverse L composition and you've got a lot of light and shadow interesting conditions. The light has changed since, uh, but hopefully the gist of it will still be there and will be recognizable in the final piece. So let's get started. So I'm getting started with the drawing stage. Uh, as always, and it's been a while since I narrated a video like this after the fact, so sorry if I'm a little rusty. Uh, the main thing for me here is this stage is just worrying about perspective. And as you can see in the reference on the left, there are two lines of parallel, two groups of parallel lines, meaning a two point perspective. Um, and I'm drawing these lines for myself in advance just to make sure I'm kind of accurate with where I place everything, but I know that I can always fix stuff later on with the paint, so I never stress too much about uh, the drawing being perfectly perfect, per se. Uh, and that's actually even a better, a bigger problem when outside, because everything is in front of you and you don't get a pre-made three, two-dimensional, sorry, impression of a three-dimensional scene, you have to create it. Uh, when you look at a photo and you work inside in the studio, you are you're kind of given everything on a silver platter. Uh, someone's already translated the uh, the reference, the the subject matter into two dimensions, and then you can measure and use the size of the paper and all sorts of tricks uh, to make sure you get the right impression. Here, you don't have the option outside. That's one of the hardest parts, by the way, of painting outside. So now you see me uh, do the first wash. Sorry about the lack of focus. It's gonna fix itself really soon. Now with the first wash, one of my favorite things to do, and I'm using, by the way, my paper is Saunders Waterford, rough, 300 grams. Um, the palette is a Paul Rubens one, so it has all sorts of colors, and I use mainly the primaries. Um, and what my focus is in, in this part of the wash is just to set the temperature so you can see some cool for the sky and then warm for the buildings. That's mainly the thing I'm doing here. Nothing too complex. This step really is, is the easiest, but you just have to keep everything flowing and people sometimes find that a challenge. Uh, my big focus here is again on primary colors or so lots of blues, yellows and reds, which help me to dictate uh, the temperature and um, and I find that it adds a lot of interest when you can see some of these colors later on with the highlights. Uh, so I always try and go as vibrant, as saturated as I can here because I know that it's going to be very easy to dumb it down or dull it later on. Okay, now I'm starting to work on that building up top and again sorry about the lack of focus, it's gonna be fixed really soon um, and I'm, I'm trying, this was really hard, this was really really hard, I was trying to get a, an impression of the complexity of the building and I actually kind of failed with this one. Uh, I don't think I did a good job with how I conveyed it. There was just a lot of details I should have avoided and, and kept to just the main shapes there. Um, but whatever, I had an image in mind that, that I first I don't think it was the most the best I could come up with and second I think my execution based on it wasn't the best. So this is what you get and it's for perf perfectly fine. You know, painting outside is chaos. That's the main thing. So I'm very forgiving. I'm usually, you know, as forgiving as I am inside, I'm even more forgiving when I'm working uh, outside and I'm just proud to bring basically anything back um, that, that kind of looks like something uh, in many cases. So yeah, so I don't worry too much about that. Now, uh, another important point for this wash, which makes it the hardest, is trying to keep everything flowing together still. So 
you see I move straight from that building onto the shadows on the uh, building that's closer to us. I don't stop, I just m continue moving it. And while you're moving it, you also wanna vary the, the temperature, you wanna, you wanna change some things, mix it up. And so uh, this is a major part of where I think the challenge comes from with the second wash, it all has to work together and make sense. By the way, the picture I took on the left is at a different time. This is why the light and shadow appear a little different. It wasn't exactly what they looked like uh, when I worked on, on the actual painting. So sorry about that. I don't have a good picture to really convey it because I only took a picture afterwards. Um, by the way, this is a good opportunity to tell you that one of my personal challenges for myself after I come back from New York uh, is to make sure I start every morning with a plein air session. It's a challenge I want to do for 30 days and see how it goes. Uh, I really want to uh, invest more time in the most important asset, which is me and my skills, which I don't do enough now, I admit. Uh, I feel like my growth is kind of stopping. I mean, I grew a lot, but now in the last month or two, it feels like it stopped because I'm focusing on other things. Uh, I hope that soon I can uh, revert my focus back to, uh, you know, art and what matters most, um, painting. And I want to start every day with like an hour and a half of plain air. That, that's like the best way for me that I can imagine to start the morning. Uh, so in any case, moving along, adding more and more shadows to the background. Um, uh, and painting around those people. At this point, I don't think, like I didn't do the best, j I think, job I could and, and now it's just enjoying it. So I'm uh, just trying things out, being brave. And this I did after a long time of not painting outside. So I was kind of just happy to do that. So I went a little crazy. Um, and that's actually a good thing. If you can get yourself to let go and even go crazy, uh, you may give up some something in terms of the result but you will earn it back in terms of the the authenticity and the spontaneity and the fun you will get these things back um so i like that trade-off of you know giving up some control but gaining back some beauty in other ways here i shouldn't have covered the street level i should have left it light completely light just like the building walls uh, that's my mistake my bad i uh, when i see asphalt and it looks a little darker i tend to dark it way too harshly and then it leads to something that I don't like as much. At this point I was like, okay, this is kind of lost, so I'll just go ahead and do whatever I want, uh, which is a good place to be in. It's not really that bad. Um, I think compositionally I should have arranged the elements a little better, uh, leaving more room under the asphalt for the, the curb or whatever, uh, because now it feels like, I think at least, it's a little too dark. Um, so yeah, that's one thing. Uh, and now it's just a matter of adding the final details and making sure you stop when you should. Okay, so I have a couple of windows there and some shadows and some d details on the tops of the buildings, but nothing more than that. Next steps are going to be just to add, I'm going to add the palm tree. Sorry, I'm yawning, I'm a bit tired. Uh, I'm going to add some shadows and then the palm tree on the right, which I still haven't gotten in. Um, some white gel pen touches. Uh, everyone asks me about my white gel pen. It's a Uniball Signo. It's S-I-G-N-O, Signo, basically. Um, white gel pen, you can get it very cheap on eBay. This is where I got it. Um, so just if you wanted to know that. Uh, I had a couple of people approach me and start talking to me and I love that, I have, I have fun, but I know a lot of people are scared of that. So if you're one of them, uh, it actually is worth it. Plain Air is one of those hacks that you really want to make sure you do to improve fast. I just cannot stress that enough. I also talk about it in my uh, Frustration Free Watercolor course, which is going to be out, by the way, really, really soon. Just some final touches and I'm going to make it before New York. Um, so I'm very stoked about that. Uh, here it is, some final details, some dry brushing, um, and some windows that I talked about earlier in the background, windows in the shadows, this uh, drain pipe, all sorts of things. And I do always have in mind to be careful to not overdo things. It's very easy sometimes. Uh, though it's not, I wouldn't say it's m one of my biggest struggles. I, I have a, a relatively easy time to just stop. Um, so here it is, the final result. And now I want to show you uh, how I, sorry, it's just the video started playing, how I removed the tape, okay, because everyone asked that. So I hope you enjoy seeing that and the final result. And now let's wrap it up. 
So I'm done with this one as you've seen. Uh, you also saw the, the, in, the finished version in the intro. Uh, let me show it to you up close. I think I was really able to capture uh, what I wanted here. So here is what I've got. Uh, I got the nice L composition. Uh, I think I messed up some things that have to do with the planning. So the execution was good, but uh, in the planning stage, I could have probably done a better job uh, in deciding how I'm gonna um, divide this into large shapes. I don't like that the asphalt street is darker. Uh, I should have probably kept it lighter despite it being quite dark uh, so that I can convey the sh cast shadows properly of the people, of the cars. Just better planning around the bottom, but I think the L shape is there and uh, that's a good thing that I achieved. This building has incredibly complex patterns as you can see. Trying to simplify them was, wasn't an easy task. Uh, but I think I got a decent result. I like the palm tree. I like a lot of things about it. So in any case, I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, producing this first for IGTV and then I'll consider putting it out uh, on YouTube as well. Let me show you some sunlight. Um, so first on IGTV because it's filmed vertically and I may share it also on YouTube. We'll see about that. But in any case, take care. We'll see you again in another one real soon.